Good evening. Good to see everybody out tonight. I appreciate you being out in the house of the Lord. And if you've been sitting back there watching me, yes, I'm having trouble with my headset tonight. And I just keep fooling with it, pulling my ears and uh, bothering me. So I'm going to just rip that thing off after a while. But anyhow, good to have everybody out. Hope you had a great day. It's been an absolutely another beautiful day here in Florida. And we appreciate everybody that's out tonight. Good to see Robert out tonight friend of Mr. Dennis Fish, and we're glad to have you out, Robert. God bless you. First time visitor. Thank you so much for being here. Hope you enjoy it. Want to come back and be with us. But thank everybody else for coming out. We still, uh, I see some of our sick folk are coming back in, and we appreciate them. We still got a few people uh, that are sick, and uh, we want to be sure and remember them. But a couple things to announce tonight. Don't forget now, We've got two series we got started up here. We got our Tuesday morning truths started up on how to study the Bible. I hope you'll, if you haven't seen that, I hope you'll get on Facebook or YouTube and watch that. I, I wish you'd share that out. And because next week we'll be going to more in depth, I gave more of a, a personal, how I do my personal Bible reading uh, yesterday. And uh, next week we'll be going more in depth on how to get the most out of the Bible, how to read the Bible. But I uh, hope, you'll, hope you'll share that out. And then our Sunday night, 5 R's Revelation, it's doing pretty good. We've got people watching that, and uh, we appreciate everybody that's watched that and viewed that. I hope that you could be here for it in person. If you can't be here in person, I guess, I guess Facebook or YouTube is the next best thing. Amen? Amen. But I uh, hope, hope you continue to pray about that and invite people out. And let's continue to see visitors come and, and maybe people say before it's everlasting too late. Uh, Kathy is going to start a nursery on Sunday night during the Revelation series for the for the nursery age kids. What's that? What age is that? Four, Four and under. So she'll be starting that on Sunday night. She wants all these parents and moms and dads to be able to enjoy uh, the, the, the 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 teaching, the lesson on Revelation. So she's going to do that. She's going to try and do it anyhow. Let's say that. So you pray for her that uh, she wants to do it, but we pray that her health will hold up and she'll be, be able to do that. Uh, also, uh, we got our young adult get-together on Saturday night, 6 o'clock at Major and Carla's. Still needing to hear some of you. I've sent messages out. I haven't heard back from you, and we need to know if you're going to be there and how many people are going to be with you so we can plan accordingly. That's always a good time, and that'll be Saturday night at 6 o'clock. And what you're going to bring besides yourself, right? So food, food wise, they're having finger food and stuff like that. So uh, plan on having a good time on that. Amen. Amen. And then we got Stephen Cure's birthday Saturday. I'm, Vivian was here yesterday and uh, reminded her not to forget Stephen's birthday. And uh, no doubt they'll be online tonight or later. And uh, happy birthday to you, Brother Stephen, a uh, few days early. We're going to get ready to go to prayer tonight. Don't forget Ephesians 3.20. Now to him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So continue to pray. I don't know if you saw today that uh, Ukraine had made its biggest attack on Russia. 
in the Black Sea, in the Black Sea fleet down there that uh, since the war had been going on. So we need to pray for Nina and all the people over there in that situation. Continue to pray for our church that God will continue to bless. I tell you what, we had a good crowd Sunday morning, had a good crowd Sunday night, and we certainly thank God for that. We still got, as I said, we've got several people who are still out sick and battling this that's going around, but we pray that they'll soon be able to be back with us. Continue to pray for Sebby and his wife and daughter and and uh, granddaughter as they go through what they're going through. Glenna's grandson, Andrew, is out of the hospital, so continue to pray for Andrew. And then the Garcia Navarrete family that lost their two children the other day, pray for them. And also the Owens family that lost Cole a week or so, so ago. And uh, also I understand that the driver of the vehicle that was hit with the Garcia Navarrete family, he's in pretty bad shape too, I believe. Somebody was telling me yesterday, so pray for all of them. And then Brother Clarence's brother Earl, oldest brother, uh, has had a stroke yesterday, and uh, they think the cancer has come back and affected his, his brain, so pray for him. And also Shirley Matson's sister's co-worker, Michelle, has a spot that's come up, and they're testing that, looking at that, so pray for them. Team pray for Chris McNabb. Chris not out yet. She's still sick and not feeling well. And she'll be having her uh, stent put in her heart on the 19th. Jenny Croner was uh, having some health issues and pray for her. Jessica Goolsby, that's uh, Grace's daughter, having back problems and neuropathy. Pray for her. And uh, Sharon Yonero had some problems with asthma and COVID, C or COVID, COPD. I need to make that a little bit bigger, don't I? Joy Sippert uh, hurt her arm from a marble, marble tabletop. One out from under her. I'm tongue-tied tonight. Joy Childers having uh, some health issues. And uh, baby Lucas, Andy Wortham, uh, Bill and Shirley Marr, they're out tonight. Shirley's not feeling well. Pray for them that, uh, that she'd been to the doctor a couple times this week. Pray for them. Little, little uh, Charlie, Charlie McCarter, the little girl, the pastor, Mark, who had brain surgery. Pray for her as she's recuperating. Logan's going to have his, his surgery still the 26th. Pray for him. He's having hip dysplasia. And then Kyle Jenkins got a good report back. That's Carlin Major's uh, neighbor on his eye. Sharon Watch is still feeling bad, and her brother and her daughters need to be saved. And we got a lot of people. Shelly Dixon's, what was Shelly's sister tomorrow? Uh, Shelly Dixon had a request. Somebody's her, is having surgery on the 22nd, her daughter, and then her sister's having shots put in her in something or back tomorrow, I believe is what that was, and uh, pray for uh, Shelly, Shelly is faithful on the program, and then Benny Music, that's Evelyn's sister with her two sons, pray for them, and uh, we got a lot of people on the main prayer list, but we appreciate you being out tonight. Remember Denny Toby in the, in the loss of his wife Sharon, and uh, pray that uh, all goes well with Denny, bless his heart, appreciate Denny. Major, you ready? I didn't think you were here, I was looking around, I hadn't seen you. I don't know how I could miss you, do you? I was in the doctor's office today, and somebody come back and said, oh, I didn't see you. I said, boy, nobody said that in a long time. I said, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. Keep it going. Keep encouraging him in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Great to see everybody out tonight. Got a great looking crowd. Got uh, 48 people here tonight on a Wednesday night. Praise the Lord for that. So glad to have Robert with us. So thank you for joining us. Nice to meet you. Um, looking forward to another great service tonight, amen. amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight with thankful hearts, Lord. We just thank you for the opportunity to be back in your house here on a, on a Wednesday night, Lord. And uh, we just praise you, Father, just for, for this church, Lord. And we just praise you for, uh, for all you've done and all that we've seen you do here in the past several months, Father. Just uh, thank you for how the church has grown, Lord. And thank you for how people are just coming to Christ, Lord, and getting saved. And how people are continuing with uh, believers' baptism and then uh, church membership, Lord. It's just such a blessing to see you move, Father. We know it's nothing that we've done. It's all through and by you and through by your grace and your mercy, dear Lord, and we just thank you for that. Father, we just want to pray for the service tonight, Father. Pray for Dad. I ask that you would anoint him and fill him with the Holy Ghost, Father. I ask that you would uh, help him to, uh, to say what you want to be said, and uh, what needs to be said, Lord, and just uh, help us to open up our hearts and minds to receive your word, Father. Help us put away any distractions. We want to hear from you, Lord. We don't want to hear him, but we want to hear you through him, Father. And help us to, to, to be ready to receive your word, Lord. And just, uh, uh, Lord, Lord, we know you tell us uh, that your word goes out and will not return to you void. Father, we want to pray if there's anybody here tonight, whether they're here in the building, whether they're 
uh, watching online, Father, that doesn't know you as the Lord and Savior of their life. Not, not are they religious or not, but do they, do they have a personal relationship with you, Father? And if they don't, Lord, I pray that tonight will be the night that they say yes to Jesus before it's everlasting too late. Father, that's the most important thing in the world. Lord, because we, as we see, as we're continuing to study with, uh, tr- you know, about the Trojan horses in the church today, Lord, we've just seen it's just a terrible, terrible time out there in the world, and there's just so many uh, signs of the times and the end times, Father, it's getting closer, and we know it's, uh, it's getting closer to the day, it could be any day, it could be, could be before I finish praying, you could come back, Father, and rapture us and take us up out of here, Lord, and that's our, that's our blessed hope we're, we're looking for, Father, and just help us to, to do all we can, have evangelistic mindset, to get the gospel out to a lost and dying world, to, to people we know, and be able to to tell people about Jesus and just to tell people about our church and invite them to church and tell them about you and tell them what they've done in our what you've done in our lives, Father. And we just praise you and thank you for all the things. Lord, we want to pray for our prayer list tonight. So many names on there, all those that were mentioned, any that weren't mentioned, any unspoken requests that anybody has, Lord Father. And so you could reach down and touch them as only you can. And Father, we just we just love you and we thank you and we give you all the praise and glory and honor for everything that happens here tonight. We know it's all because of you. Nonetheless, we ask not our will, but that your will be done. In the holy, sweet, precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's all stand for a few minutes, and we're going to sing, When the Road is Called Up Yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather on the on the other shore, and the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder i'll be there on that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share when his chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the sky and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder i'll be there amen wow can you gain weight in your head you can? Well, I guess that's what you call having the big head. <laughs> Anyhow, good to see everybody out tonight. We appreciate you being out. Thank you, Major. Thank you, Miss Jean, for that. Let me pull up here and see where we are tonight on, uh, on our program. We're, we're on the Trojan horses. Where's the horse? Man, I thought the horse had taken off, galloped out of town, took off with the rodeo. Got the alarm clock up here. Going to sound the alarm again tonight. And uh, we're on Trojan horses, part number... 34, progressivism, part number two. two. That's an easy one, isn't it? Before we get started on progressivism, can I, can I do a little R&R tonight? Sure. You, you know what R&R is, don't you? Yeah. Ranting and raving just on, on current events. Listen, if you, listen, can I just say this? I've been saying this so long and yeah. sound like a broken record just saying it over and over and over. But if you can't look around at the, at the, at the current events in the world and tell that there's something crazy going on, 
you're in, you're in a world of hurt. Amen. And uh, there are just so many things going on. And I wanted to just hit a couple of them tonight. I just I couldn't pass them up. Anybody see on, on Mexican, the Mexican government today come out on Mexican TV and had alien corpses, they said. Not, I'm not talking about alien across the border. I'm talking about alien from outer space. Guys, I'm telling you, it's setting up for end time events. The Bible says, talks about in Thessalonians, there's going to be a great delusion. God's going to give people a delusion. People have got, they're believing all kind of crazy stuff. That's playing right into it, man. Don't you fall for that. Amen? Amen. And then did you see the other day, I didn't mention this, I should have, because we're all Second Amendment people, right? Amen. 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 All Second Amendment supporters. But the, you see where the New Mexico governor signed that executive order banning uh, open carry and concealed carry. I, that's unconstitutional. She won't maybe get away with that. But uh, that's a mess. And then I said that the Ukraine made their largest attack on Russia to date with kamikaze drones on the Black Sea fleet. Wow. And then China has deployed over 40 planes to the Taiwan Strait. Man, that's a hotbed right there, man. I mean, that's, that's, just, that's, just, that's like uh, something with gasoline on it, just waiting for somebody to throw a match on it. And then I don't know if you know it or not or realize this. We don't hear much about it. You know, the new, can, I don't know if I need to tell you this or not. You probably know this. You're smart people. The news outlets are controlled by just a few people. And they only, they, 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 they let you see what they want you to see. We don't see everything that's going on in the world. But in the world, the escalation of the genocide of Christians that's happening across the world I mean, in India and places, it's just almost astronomical. I mean, it's so bad. And then 10,000 people missing in the deadly floods in Libya. And then 2,900 have died in, in the Morocco earthquake from last week. I mean, the wildfires in Maui and, and Canada. I mean, I, I just saw this. The Mormons and the Muslims have kindly joined up. You know, talking about ecumenicism. Let me just give you a heads up right here so you'll know this. As we get into the end times, we've seen this merging of these, these religions of the world and false religions coming together. Right. The only pe the, there's only one group of people I know that stands out right. against all that. That's the born-again Christian. Amen. Every other they, one of these false religions, man, they're merging together, and they're just, it's, just going, it's pushing again right into the end time events. Amen. A California mayor was spanked by a drag queen for the yep. fundraiser. You saw that? Yep. Wow. Wow. Of all the ways to raise money. Right. Wow. I might have paid not to have seen it. I don't know. <laughs> but, man, isn't that crazy? And then listen to this. There's a side of TikTok. You know what TikTok is? All these young youngsters know what TikTok is. That's, a, that's a cra one of the craziest social media platforms out there. Uh, they, they have a side of TikTok that believes that Jesus was a transgender and that God goes by the they or them pronouns. And then I saw a TikTok uh, video that a, the lady put out that said Eve was the first transgender, that she was a man and transgendered into a woman. Wow. Wow. You, you know, hey, that'll be enough stop right there and say, let's just go to the altar and pray. Amen. Amen. I mean, we in a mess. Can you agree with that? We're in a mess. Well, let's just see what we can do about sounding the alarm here tonight. Let me, let me see if I can get that thing to go off. Huh? Battery operated. Modernism. Modernism. As I told you, that went off on me. Miss Roxanne gave it to me for my birthday, and that went off at midnight the first night I had it. And, buddy, I tell you what, it's a wonder I didn't shoot somebody. <laughs> I, I mean, man, I, I mean, I come up out of there like a wild man, just looking and bouncing, looking, thought, what in the world is going on? Anyhow, tonight, we're going to be on, on uh, the Trojan horse of, of progressivism. We've had 33 previous lessons. I won't go into all that tonight. Uh, to re review that tonight, but we are going to sound the alarm on progressivism. We started on that last week, and we only got about, well, part way through it, 
And I want to go back and just hit a couple things so you'll know because you, you might ask, you know, I don't remember what progressivism is. And there's a term that goes with that, not only progressivism, but progressive Christianity. And I gave this to you last week. Progressive Christianity is a version of Christianity that sells itself as a valid alternative for Christians that on the surface looks a lot like the Christian worldview and may seem in the eyes of many people to be more acceptable, more likable, and more easier to digest than traditional biblical Christianity. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. But in reality, it's not Christian at all. It's a fake, cheap, false version of the true gospel. And here's a simple uh, definition I put down that maybe might help you a little bit more. When you talk about progressives and progressivism, they want the kingdom without the king. That's what most people want. Amen. They want the blessings without the Bible. They want the blessings of God, but they want to submit to the Word of God. Well, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't work like that. Amen. Amen. And when you think about that, here's an FYI to you to start off. There can be no such thing as progressive Christianity. God is eternal. He sits outside of time and he looks from the beginning to the end. He sees into eternity past, into eternity future. He's not limited to time and God is unchanging. God does not change with the times. He doesn't have to check up on what's going on in the news in D.C. or Hollywood or Hollywood or any place else. He knows all about it. And he's not going to change to satisfy any individual. So he's not, God, listen, let me just say, let me just sound the alarm. God is not progressive. Amen. Amen. And then, they, then Jesus is not progressive. The Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Jesus is not progressive. But listen, the, this progressive stuff is something right out of the pits of hell. Amen. Amen. And then we think about the Bible. The Bible's not progressive. You know, people, people, the progressives, I'm going to get on that tonight, they think the Bible's outdated and archaic and it no longer is relevant to society and to the culture in which we're living. So therefore, we need to change it and rewrite it and re, to make a revision of it to make it more palatable for people to accept and put down. But that's not the Bible at all. Amen. So there's no such thing as progressive Christianity. That's just a name that they give this false stuff out there. So I'm going to say that, let me say this again tonight that probably all of us, well, let me just ask a question. If you were here last week, and as I'm just getting started early into this lesson, how many of you know somebody that's a progressive? Oh, you, you guys, you know progressives. These older folks not raising their hand, you know progressives. Right. You know churches that are progressives. Right. You know, Christians that claim to be progressives. Right. You got the Methodist church and the Lutheran church and all these churches that have gone in this, in this social gospel. That's progressive. Right. Some of you came out of that. You know progressive people. So don't act like it's a shock to say, I don't know anything about that. You've been around that. That's probably the reason some of you left it. Right. Amen. 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 I'm just being honest with you. Listen, that's not the broad stroke everybody in those denominations. They're good people in all denominations. But the headquarters and the top of them have gone to pot. They've gone progressive. They've gone liberal. They've gone modern. So last week I gave you a couple points to help you understand a little bit more about progressives. I talked number one, point number one last week. Progressives have a low view of the Bible. In case you haven't figured this out yet, your pastor holds a high view of the Bible. Amen. This is the book. Amen. It's not our bylaws. It's not your ideas. It's not what they vote on. It's not what they say out of D.C. It's not what Hollywood says. It's what the Word of God says. Amen. Progressives take a low view of the Bible. That's enough to make me want to throw up right there. Amen. They take a low view of Jesus. You know, they talk about Jesus, but well, they're not talking about the Jesus of the Bible. I mean, man, I'm talking about the virgin-born, only begotten Son of God, the sinless Savior that died on the cross at Calvary, that paid for the sin debt with His blood and rose again the third day that's coming back. Hallelujah. I'm not into that progressive stuff. I don't take a low view of Jesus. Amen. If you've got a low view of Jesus, you need to hit an altar and get saved. Right. Because, man, that's, you can't have a low view of Jesus. Jesus is the central figure of this book. 
6,000 years of history revolves around him. We date our time because of his birth. Amen. I mean, listen, you can't, you can't have a low view of Jesus. Amen? Right. So tonight we're going to start with, the, with the point number three. You ready? Put your seatbelt on, t- tighten up, and hold on. Progressives believe in subjective str- truth instead of objective truth. You with me? You want me to give you a little bit of clarity on that? Progressives believe in subjective truth, not objective truth. You say, I don't know what the difference is. I'm going to help you. Subjective truth. When you say something is subjective, just take the word subject. It's subject to your biases, your opinions, your feelings, what you think. Objective truth is based on the facts. It's based on the truth. It's based on the Word of God. So let me say again, now that you understand what subjective and objective is, subjectives, progressives believe in subjective truth. Amen. Not objective truth. When you think about that, you say, what in the world does that mean? Well, look at the verse in John chapter number 18. John chapter number 18. Boy, I gave them the verses. They're right on it tonight. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. Listen to this. I have this underlined on my my, uh, verse here. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Verse 38, Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? That's been asked for Almost 2,000 years, what is truth? And when he said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find in him no fault at all. Wow. I'll tell you what is truth. John 14, 6. Amen. I'll tell you what truth is. I'm going to tell you what truth is. Jesus said, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, not a way, not a way of many ways, not a way of multitudes of ways out there. He said, I am the way. He said, I am the truth. Not a truth or part of the truth or subjective truth. He said, I am the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 17, 17. Here's a verse that, one of those verses we talk about uh, memorization. John 14, 6, John 17, 17. Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Can I say to you tonight? God's word is absolute truth. It's not not subjective truth. It's not based on your whim or my whim or my feeling or your feeling or your, you know, opinions are like parts of your body. Everybody's got one. God's word's not based on that. God's word is the absolute truth. Amen. Amen. With progressives, they take the Bible and they make it into subjective truth. Well, if I, if I feel like that sits, fits the situation or if I like it or if it applies to me, then it might be truth. But if not, it may be up to your interpretation or your interpretation or your interpretation. Listen, I'm going to tell you, when you come into Freedom Baptist Church, there's one, there's one interpretation. There's one voice that stands out above all others, and it's the Word of God. Amen? We don't play any games. We don't, we don't even buy into that foolishness. We don't even believe anything about that. A subjective truth. We believe the Bible is absolute truth. Truth, Amen. Amen. When people say to you, you know, the people today, we got people today say, "Well, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in absolute truth." You know, you can ask them the question, "Are you absolutely sure about that?" And they won't know how to answer that because they said there's no absolute truth. How can they be absolutely sure there's no absolute truth? Somebody says, "I don't believe in absolute truth." Say, "Are you absolutely sure about that?" And they'll have to back up because they won't know what to say. Because listen, because listen, they don't believe in objective truth, but in subjective truth. Here's some thoughts I got from Gary Hamrick on, uh, and I heard, and I, and I liked it. I'm going to tie it right into this. Number one, let me give you this point, in, uh, a sub point, and point number three. Truth is objective. Amen? There's no such thing as, you say, well, that's my truth or your truth. No, it's not. I don't have a truth. You don't have a truth. We have the truth. You can have your opinion and say, I don't believe in the truth. You can do that, but you can't say, I've got my truth, and that's my version of the truth, and you've got your version of the truth, and I'm going to believe my version. Your version doesn't count because truth is objective. It's not up to feelings or opinions. It's objective. Amen? 
there has to be an objective standard of truth. There has to be. That's what's wrong with the world. That's what's wrong with the alphabet people. That's what's wrong with most of the people in many of these liberal progressive churches is they don't believe in absolute truth. They don't believe in the standard of the Word of God. So thereby, they just rip out the parts they don't like and throw it out. Wow. You say, well, preacher, my truth is important and as valuable as your truth. No, I don't have any truth. The only truth I have is this Bible right here. You say, this is how crazy it is. If I ask you, how much money you got in your bank account? And you say, I got a million dollars in my bank account. I say, good, let's go down to the bank. And you go down and you say, I want to withdraw a million dollars out of my bank account. They say, well, I'm sorry, sir, you only have $10 in it. You say, but I, but I feel like I've got a million dollars in there. And they say, I'm sorry what you feel like you get. It doesn't matter what you feel like about how much money you've got in your bank account. What matters is what's in the bank. And it's the same way with the Word of God. You might feel a lot of things, and you might change on a lot of things, and you might have a lot of opinions about a lot of things, but when it comes to the truth of the Word of God, it is absolute truth. Amen. Amen. Not only is truth objective, truth is universal. What is true for one is true for all. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter when you lived. Let me give you an example. The health and wealth false gospel they're preaching today. You know what I'm talking about? See if this works. See if it's, here's a way to find out if if that's the truth. Let's go to the hospital and there's a little old lady over there, a Christian, been a lady, a Christian been been saved for years and years. She's laying there dying of cancer and let's walk up and tell her the Bible says you ought to be able to get up in that bed and walk and be healed and get out of here and be back on your feet and not have any problems and then walk out and see what happens and she dies. That's not truth. Go to where my buddy Peter Mawangangi is over in Kenya, Africa. And walk into their churches where they many of their churches are just out in the open or just have just have just tin roofs or just sitting on, on stumps or on logs or on something outside. And they walk to church and they stay there for two or three hours and they have church and they worship God and they just make it a, it make it's a highlight of their life. Go over there and tell them, Hey, if you were living the way you ought to be living them, you were a good Christian, you'd be driving a Cadillac, you'd be having money in the bank, you wouldn't have any problems and see if that is truth over there. That's not that's not truth. The health and wealth, prosperity gospel is a false gospel because it's not true everywhere you go. Amen. Amen. Man, you ought to write that down. That's good stuff. It's not true across the board. But I tell you what is true across the board. I tell you what is true. You find somebody, no matter where you go, no matter when it is, no matter where where they are, no matter who they are, no matter what they've been into, no matter how bad their life has been, say, hey, you need to be saved. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That'll go, hey, that'll preach here. That'll preach in Africa. That'll preach in the hospital. That'll preach in a nursing home. That'll preach at your house. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's a universal truth. That's the truth. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. That's truth. Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hey, I can go over to Africa with Peter over there in in Kenya and preach that, and it would be just as true there as it would be right here. You know why? Because truth is universal. Amen? Amen. Wow. Truth is universal. Go over there and tell Nina in the Ukraine who's struggling to keep those kids going, they're orphaned from their parents being killed in the war and been displaced and, and lost their homes and, and, and doing everything they can to, 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 to share the gospel. Go over there and present the health and wealth gospel to them. Say, well, Nina, boy, if you were living right and you were just the kind of Christian you ought to be, you wouldn't even be at war. That's so sad that people would believe that trash. Amen. But I tell you what you can do with Nina over there, what they're doing, they can preach John 3.16 and Romans 6.23 and Romans 10.13 and, and they're seeing people saved and people come to the Lord. You know why? Because truth is universal. Amen. 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 Truth is, truth is, wait a minute, see, truth is objective. Truth is universal. Number three, truth is absolute. Some people believe that truth is relative. It's not. It's absolute. 
You know what relative means? They say, come out with that in education some years back, you know, situational ethics. You know what that is? That means that, that, uh, that means if you need to lie and it's going to help you and it's going to be to your advantage, then it's really not a lie. It's okay. That's situational ethics. That's relative truth. Truth is not relative. Truth is absolute. Amen? Amen. Situation. That's why, that's why we got kids growing up. They don't even know right from wrong. Right. They've been taught, well, but you know, you know, you know, if you get caught with your hand in a cookie jar, just lie about it. It'll help you. I tell you what, it'd help me. If daddy would have caught me lying, it'd been worse than if my hand would have been in the cookie jar. Amen. My daddy was a stickler for the truth. I don't know if he knew that truth was absolute, but he sure practiced it. It wasn't relative. It didn't matter what you done. It didn't matter what the excuse was. It didn't matter who told it. If it was, I used to say, Daddy, who told you that? You know what Daddy said? It doesn't matter who told me. It's the truth. And boy, no matter where I went, what I did, everybody always had to go tell Daddy on me. And I always said, who told you that? It didn't matter who told you. He didn't believe in situational ethics. And I tell you what, if he'd have caught me lying, he'd have tanned my rear end up right. I wouldn't have been able to sit down. Amen. Today, many do not believe in absolute truth. They say there's no such thing as absolute truth. Again, ask them, are you absolutely sure? If they say yes, then, no, <laughs> then you've got a real problem. Amen. Listen to this. Here's something scary. A Barna survey found, you know, George Barna and his surveys, whether you believe statistics or surveys or not, but something <laughs> makes for an interesting piece of the sermon. A Barna survey found that 64% of adults said truth is relative to the person or situation. That's a good piece over 50% in case you can't cipher that out, Jethro. 64% of adults said truth is relative to the situation or the person. Listen to this. 83% of teens said truth was relative. You wonder why schools are in such a bad shape? They're, they're, well, number one, they've kicked God out. Number one, they've taken Jesus out. Number one, one they've taken the Bible out. Number two, they brought in all this crazy foolishness, trash that they brought in. And they're pushing that in CRT and all this to BLM and all that trash that they're trying to push in. Thank God that you live in Florida. Right. Amen. Golly, now you should have been waving your Bible and standing up in your seat and jumping up and down when I said that. Almost like, almost like I hit a nerve on that. Y'all be, thank God you got a governor who said we're not going to put up with that. Amen. Amen. I'm just telling you the truth. Hold on a minute. Not just 64% of adults and 83% of teens. Listen to this. Less than one out of three born-again Christians believe in absolute truth. Wow. How many we got tonight, Major? Oh, yeah. I can't cipher that. I can't divide three into that that fast. That's a little, bit, a little bit better than 15. Three times 15 be 45, so I figure that pretty fast. So that means that uh, look at your neighbor right there, look at those around you, and if that, if that be the case, a little less than one in three does not even believe in absolute truth. I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to say, can I just say it? You want me to say it? Yeah. But if you go to Freedom Baptist Church, you ought to believe in absolute truth. Amen. You hear it preached just about every time we get up, every time we get in the pulpit, every time something major got up the other day and preached on the devil's a liar, and we, we still go on. We want to be a part of the devil and be like, Jesus said, you're your father, the devil. There are a lot of Christians that go by the name Christian. And really, they're more like the devil than they are the father in heaven. Right. One lesson, one out of three. But we're not talking about, whoa, 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 whoa. It didn't say Christians. It didn't say church members. It didn't say liberals or modernists or progressives. It said one out of three born again church people right. do not believe in absolute truth. Right. Wow. Exactly. No wonder we're so bad shape. Can you know what the Bible says? Psalm 119. Psalm 119, 180. Now watch when it flashes on the screen up there. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Say that first two words. They got it broken down. Forever. Say it with me. Forever. How long? Forever. Not for a year, not for a week, not for a month, not for the Old Testament, not for the New Testament, not for 500 years ago, not for a thousand years ago, not for today. How long is it settled? Forever. O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Listen, 
We can either live according to the truth or not live according to that. But one thing for sure, truth doesn't change based on your situation or your belief or opinion. That's right. Oh, I shouldn't say this. I almost got on it yesterday, and I didn't. I'll probably get on it next week. I ought to just save it. But, but it's a, you know, it's the same way with reading the Bible. And so people say, I get so, I get so. I've got visitors here tonight. I need to contain myself a little bit. Hey, I get so sick of hearing Christian, so-called Christians saying, why? Well, that's just the way you interpret the Bible. I don't interpret it that way. Can I tell you something? There's only one main interpretation of the Bible. Well, that got quiet, didn't it? It's not my interpretation. There's one main interpretation of the Bible. Now, there are a lot of applications. I was in the head, hills and hollers of West Virginia, pastor up there in 21 years in a, in a holler in, in Grantsville and Calhoun County up there. And, boy, I got so sick and tired of people. Well, that's just, the way, that's just the way you interpret it. I don't interpret it that way. I didn't know there was any but one way to interpret it. Peter said over there in, in his, in, in his uh, book, and Peter said, the, the, the Word of God is not left up to private interpretation. Right. It's not left up to private. It's not, not left up to you to decide. Right. People say, well, that's sin for you, but it ain't sin for me. Wait a minute. Hold, hold a minute. Right. Do you think God left sin up to you to decide what's sin for you and what's sin for me, that you've got a different standard than what I've got? Foot on that. Now, there might be some hindrances and some weights and some things that you drag along that might bother you, it might not bother me, but I'm going to tell you what, when it comes to sin, there is no two standards. Amen. There's not no two opinions. Not, there's not a million ideas out there. You say, now, preacher, wait a minute. That's just, you, that's just sin to you, but it's not sin to me. The Bible says it's sin. It's sin. Amen. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. It doesn't matter if you like it. didn't say we're going to vote on it Wednesday night at church and see if it's a sin or not. No. No, there's no, there's no, you know, that's what people have done to truth. Well, it's a sin to you, but it's not a sin to me. No, if, if it's a sin, it, hey, 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 if it's a sin, it's a sin to you. Amen. My face red. It feels like it is. Wow. Truth doesn't change. Truth doesn't change. That's why the alphabet people have to run wild and parents and, and, and family members are, are condoning that foolishness. Well, it might be true. It might not be a sin to them. Hey, listen, if it's a sin to me, it's a sin to them. Amen. Hey, man, you sit there all smug as a bug on a rug right there tonight and say, well, preacher, I just don't, I don't even, I don't even give a hoot whether you believe me or agree with me. Amen. This right here is the only thing I worry about. No care about what you, I, I, listen, you, you, I, I hope that I never ask you your opinion about that. Because if you'd give it to me, you, what come out of my mouth, I may not be responsible for. So don't ever come up to me and say, well, that's just, just your opinion about sin. No, it's not my opinion. This absolute truth settled it a long time ago, what sin is. And I get so sick and tired. Of it. Well, that's just the way you interpret it. Our church interprets that there's only one main interpretation of the Bible. Either you're right or you're wrong. Amen. Truth, Bob. <laughs> truth, not only that, me going, truth is eternal. You know why truth is eternal? Because God is eternal. Amen. God is eternal. His word is eternal. God is eternal. Truth is eternal. We, these progressives, they almost make me sick. I'm getting myself sick a lot tonight. Somebody, somebody on screen put up some puke faces on the screen so I can see it out there. Psalm 119, 160. Psalm 119, 160. Listen to what the Word of God says. Thy word is true from when? Beginning. From the beginning. And every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. How long? Forever. The word is true from the beginning. Every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Isaiah 48. Here's another, here's another verse you ought to memorize right here. Isaiah 48. Isaiah 40, verse 8. Isaiah 40, verse 8. Verse 8, not 48. Come on, man. My, my lingo's got you in trouble. Now they're struggling. 
Isaiah 40, verse number 8. Here we go. Well, I hope we're going. There we go. Isaiah 48. The grass withers, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand. How long? Forever, forever, forever. Truth is eternal. That's why we can't be progressive and be Christian. Now, you can be progressive, but you can't be progressive and Christian because that's an oxymoron. You can't be a progressive Christian. You say, boy, I'm a, I'm a liberal. I wouldn't brag. If, I, if you are, I wouldn't brag about it. Amen. 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 I, wouldn't, I wouldn't tell anybody because, listen, truth has not changed and will not change. Truth is eternal no matter when or where you live. Amen. Amen. One of the battles raging today is because people want to change the truth of God's Word and say that's no longer truth. It doesn't mean what it used to mean. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever heard that? Well, that's an archaic book. Uh, well, that was written in, in uh, KJV 1611, and, and you know, that's outdated. But li listen, this is taken out of the, it was taken out of the manuscripts of the Word of God that was passed down, that was handed down. It's the Word of God that's been true from the very beginning. Amen. And how long is it going to stand? Amen. Forever. Grab your KJV Bible and hold on to it. Because progressives don't like it. Liberals don't like it. You say, well, you, hey, hi, listen, you, I shouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it anyhow. How can you be so sure about the KJV Bible? Because, I, because about 90% about, about of Christianity today hates it. And if they hate it, that's enough to make me say, hey, that must be the right book. Right. It's like the ones that get mad. At, hey, listen, they'll let, Muhammad, they'll let Muhammad get down and pray at school. They'll let drag queens come into school. They'll let the mayor of California. I'd like to have been the one with that pat on busted his rear end. So I to give him something to shout about and let a drag queen bust his rear end. But I'm going to tell you what, they don't want to stand for the truth of the Word of God. Amen. Right, amen. Let me get, make sure you're on the right page with me. Sin is sin no matter where, where, when you live. Well, you know, I, you know, I believe that was sin back in Daddy's day, but it's not sin today. Well, if it's sin in Daddy's day, it's sin today. Right. And it'll be tomorrow. Thank you, Brother Bill. And it'll be tomorrow. And if it was sin when Paul wrote it back there, it'd be, it's sin today. Right. Well, I just believe that society's changed and the culture's changed. And, you know, I think premarital sex, it's not wrong anymore. Well, you don't know the Bible. Right. Yeah. Amen. Well, I just think, you know, our culture's changed and we progressed to this point and, you know, men can marry men and women can marry women and, and we can just transgender and be in transition and believe what we want and be a, be a cat or a dog or a dinosaur or a black bear or whatever you want to be and you just, it's just okay. All foot on that. Right. Now that makes me want to throw up right there. Right. People believe that kind. Of, that's not truth. Truth is eternal. Right's right no matter where or when you live. You say, well, you know, preacher, I'm thinking about getting saved. I'm thinking about believing the Bible. Listen, you do believe it all. Amen. Amen. Take it all, man. Don't just start picking and choosing because you're in trouble. Right. Whatever point this is, I don't know what point it is. <laughs> truth, is truth is freeing. John 8, 31. That's why we're going to spend the last few minutes right here. Truth is freeing. John 8, 31. Then said Jesus to, these, the, to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth. Well, come, come, I, guys, I need some participation. Truth. Act like you've had too much to eat tonight. <laughs> I need some participation. Amen. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth. shall make you truth. free. They answered him. We be Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Can I tell you how short their memory was? Their forefathers had spent 400 years in bondage in Egypt. And they said to Jesus, we never been in bondage to anybody. How quickly we forget. Wow. Verse 34, you with me? Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. You say, I'm free to do, I'm free to sin. And as soon as you commit the sin, you become the servant to that sin. Amen. You say, I'm free to do, no, you know, you're free to live for God. You're free to live godly and holy. You're not free to sin. Now, if you want to sin, you can say, listen, that's your choice. But the moment you sin, 
you become a servant to that sin. You know how many people took their first drink of alcohol and ended up becoming an alcoholic? Do you know how many people smoked their first joint? Man, hey, dude. <laughs> smoked their first joint, man, and end up being hooked on weed. It's, it's a gateway drug. You know how many people popped their first pill and end up becoming a drug addict? You know how many people shot up with heroin or crack or cocaine or something, man, meth and all this crazy stuff out there, and they didn't mean to get addicted, but they become the servant to that. And you got men and women that sell their body, sell their soul. You get somebody hooked on crack and meth and all that stuff, they'll sell their soul to get another hit. And there are people out there that use that to their advantage. You know how many people watch porn and they get addicted? You know how addictive porn is? They say, well, I'm just going to watch it. Listen, you, you become the servant to that. Amen? Amen. Jesus said, who serve and commit sin is the servant. I don't want to be the servant to send any, anything. Amen. That's why you all live as godly and holy, as clean, as pure, as separate as you can. Because all those things are like an octopus with their tentacles. They just keep wrapping around you until they grab you and you become the servant. Amen. And we got church members all over America and the world today, the servants to, to sin. Because they're well, I think I didn't think one drink. I, I'm pretty sure you know one drink won't do anything. Yeah, one drink will cause you to be an alcoholic. That's my mommy. Let's just drag my, let's go back to Logan, West Virginia, and drag my mommy out of the grave and bring her back. And ask her about her daddy and her brothers that died alcoholics. And tell me that one drink won't do it. No, tell me about the boy that I grew up with, the young boy that's younger than me, that his daddy gave me his first drink on New Year's Eve. As a, as a 10 or 11, 12-year-old boy, I can't remember, and he ended up being a drug addict and, and, and an alcoholic. And his life has been a total mess. Let me tell you how many kids I went to school with. I went to school back, man, when, hey, dude. Quaaludes, remember that term? That just popped into my mind. Quaaludes, man, well, quaaludes. Eddie knows what we remember. He, I mean, we had the same age group, right? And all that stuff, man, slipping around, slipping behind the, behind the school and out on the hill and out on the bank, down on the street, and down on the river, down at the beach and everywhere. And, and man, slipping around, drinking a beer, smoking a joint, having your quaaludes. And, man, I'm going to tell you what, sniffing glue right. and huffing paint. <laughs> So hey, I'm talking about, I'm talk, I don't know if you know any of them. I'm talking about the ones that I, hey, they burn out. Son, they ain't worth two cents. Right. They ain't got enough sense to get in out of the rain. Amen. They'll stand there and just look up and drown in a rainstorm. If they lived in Florida, it's one of they don't drown out there just, just looking straight up. I'm telling you honest fact. Right. Servant to sin. Boy, I didn't know I was going to get started on that, but it's the truth, amen. amen. Verse 35. Good thing I got that clock right there. Verse 35, you with me? Yeah. Amen. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. Amen. If the son therefore shall make you free, Amen. you shall be free indeed. Amen. Amen. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm about to take me a happy spell right here thinking about when I got saved and what Jesus did for me. And man, listen, all those things, he just kind of just cut them loose from me. And I'm going to tell you what, he made me free of all that. Amen. Free indeed. Verse, jump down to verse number 40. This ought to be my life verse right here. But now you seek to kill me. A man that's told you the truth. That's what I feel like my life verse ought to be. People get mad at me because I tell them the truth. Oh, they'll love Benny Hinn and lie to him and Joel Osteen and grin to him and T.D. Jakes and Joyce Meyer and, and Mike Murdoch. Mike, but I don't forget Mike Murdoch back there. He threw that one out. And all those people on there, just tell them all how good you are, man. God's going to do all that. They, they, they love that. Right. You, live, you get up here and fire it out like I fired out. Amen. And you just preach the truth and preach the Bible. And, tell, and, and, and then people, they might want to kill you. A man that told you the truth. But now Jesus said, but now you seek to kill me. A man that hath told you the what? truth which I have heard of God this did not Abraham things, more things haven't changed much have they verse number 41 ye do the deeds of your father 
Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. You know what they said right there? They accused Jesus of being born. They, 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 they say, you know what they thought? They said Mary was out there running around, got pregnant. She got pregnant out of, out of wedlock. You were born of fornication. We're not born of fornication. Can you imagine saying that to the sinless son of God? Talking to Jesus, we'd be, we'd be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Wow, people. You know what? You give people enough, enough time to talk, they'll hang themselves. Right. They'll trap themselves. I wish I could learn to be quiet because if I could be quiet longer, you'd trap yourself in your own foolishness. My problem is I want to jump in. As soon as you say something wrong, I want to jump right on, on you with both feet. I need to just, just sit and wait and you'll get your own self messed up. We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus saith, said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Verse 43, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word? Here it is. Verse 40, is this where you preached from the other day, Major? Yeah. Year of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. How much truth in the devil? none when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it wow right. can i tell you something being in slavery to sin is worse than being in slavery to man man sin is a man it's a terrible taskmaster go down here man go down here there's somebody go, go, go down here to the homeless shelters go down here to people were just like you and me at one time and man they've lost everything they had because they become a servant to the sin Really, to really be free, we find that freedom comes in Jesus Christ. Amen. The free Amen. gift of the free gift of salvation yeah. is found in Jesus Christ. Because you know what? I, you know what? Listen, anybody got their Freedom Baptist shirt on tonight? Nobody got it on tonight. Man, what are we doing? Nobody, you got it on? Hey, right there. You, yeah, but you don't have that, that one on. Stand up, there, Evan, and do, do a little pirouette there in the middle of the aisle. Dance a little bit right there. <laughs> look what that says. Turn around. Let everybody look at that. Right, right. Well, she'll do anything I ask, won't she? What a woman. <laughs> hey, see what that is? Hey. Jesus can break all the bonds of sin right. in a person's life. You say, I don't believe I can get saved. I don't believe so and so can get saved. I don't think so and so can. Anybody can get saved. Right. Jesus Christ has the power to break any sin, habit, or addiction. Hallelujah. Man, that ought to put a shout on a dry Baptist. Amen. Well, we want to quit right there. We didn't get very far. That was point three tonight, by the way. We got point one, point two last week point three tonight we still got a couple more points to go and maybe we can move on off of progressivism but i tell you what's nasty it's dangerous it's deadly it's damning i'm and again i'm listen don't don't take my word for it take the bible's word for it check me up check me out i'm telling you the truth what i'm telling you is the truth man we're in a mess out there amen, amen. i don't know about you but i'm glad i'm saved amen, amen. well let's bow our heads and pray lord thank you for the day for your blessings Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to come out on a, on a Wednesday night on Prop 9. And Lord gets to rant and rave and scream and yell and jump, spit, slobber, and beat on the devil and anything else that moves. And, Lord, I thank you for these people who have come out, people are online. Lord, what a blessing they are to me. Lord, I just, I'm just so happy tonight that I'm saved. Wow. I'm so glad I've been set free. I'm so glad that the power of Jesus was able to break any sin in my life, any habit, any addiction, anything that's in, in, in the way. Jesus Christ is powerful enough to do that. Amen. And, Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I just ask you to help me to continue to stand for the truth. Help me not to backslide and to, and to be like so many preachers that just weak and whiny and yellow back, limp red. Oh, gosh. No, help me not to be like that just take me out of out of here and kill me before i'd ever get like that and lord i thank you for our church and for our people every head bowed every eye closed how many people be honest and i say preacher thank god i know i'm saved i'm on my way to heaven i don't have to worry about it. i know i'm on my way to heaven god bless you god bless you thank you for that maybe you didn't raise your hand you couldn't raise you could have i don't know i don't know but if you didn't raise your hand how many people be honest and say 
you know what, preacher, I need to be saved. I really need Jesus in my heart. Man, listen, I, I know that things are going on. I know I, I need to be saved before it's everlasting too late. Anybody, not to embarrass you, not to come to you, but just ask you, would you have enough honesty, enough courage, enough boldness, just slip your hand up and down so we could pray for you and say, yes, I need to be saved. Well, if you're here tonight and you've never been saved, I want to tell you, you need to be saved. If you really want to be saved, pray a prayer or something like this, would you? doesn't have to be exact, but something like this. Say, Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner, and I know I cannot save myself. But tonight, the best I know how, I'm giving my heart to Jesus, and I'm trusting him. Amen. If you really meant that and said that tonight, I'm going to ask you to come down and shake hands with me and say, Yes, I got saved. Ask Jesus into my heart tonight while we stand. Let's sing a verse, and if you want to come down and shake my hand, say, yep, I prayed that prayer. I believe that tonight. I want to be. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross. Where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will claim. On a Wednesday night, wow, what a blessing it is. Have, how many do we have? Wow, that's a good crowd on a Wednesday night. And that'd be a good crowd on a, at one time, that'd been a good crowd on a Sunday morning, wouldn't it, Brother Bill? <laughs> we'd, we'd have been glad to have that on a Sunday morning. But uh, thank you for coming out. Pray as the week goes on and hope to see you Sunday. Pray for the service of Sunday and morning service, Sunday night, Revelation study, and then Tuesday morning, truth, we get back on starting the Bible. Good to see my buddy. Come up, everybody. Let me love on you a minute. He come in, man, he come in, run and hug me, turn around, let the camera look at you. My buddy's been sick for a good while, man, and I missed him. I thought maybe he forgot me. Boy, what, when he saw me, he hadn't forgot me. Amen? You want to pray tonight or want me to get somebody else? You want to pray?
Where I belong I'm moving out 